welcome to another episode of the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Let us be the crispy noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news, folks. It's our job to give you the most news about world of sports, entertainment, odd news, and whatever else we happen to stumble across. Isn't that right, Mike? That's right. We bring it to you with our unique sense of humor and wackiness. You never know what you're going to get here on the Crispy Noodle Podcast. That's right. Uh, we do have some topics prepared for you on this week's episode. But before we get into all the crazy news that we want to talk about in sports, entertainment, and odd news, we like to do a little personal bit, let you know what, what we've been up to, what's happening in our world. So, Mikey, what's happening in Costanzo country? Um, It's been hot recently, so oh, I've, yeah. I've been trying. Are we doing a weather r- report? Because, yeah, here in <laughs> Philadelphia, it's been brutal. It's been brutal. I've been avoiding we the are, heat. We are in a full-blown heat wave. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. It's Heat index is constantly hovering around 100 degrees. T- today, when I left. It's been ugly. Today, when I left to come record. When you came to grab me, um, it was the first time I had stepped outside all day. <laughs> yeah, I try to avoid the heat and the outdoors as much as humanly possible. Does that uh, make yeah. me a recluse? Does that make me a weird, like hermit creature? Yes. No, probably. I don't think so. No. no? Okay. No. All right. Well, th- Rich says no. So. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. When, when it gets this hot, this is unbearable. No, it's unbearable. Stay inside. Watch television. You got a new big screen TV. Yeah. Just sit, sit inside. Watch the TV. Play video games. I finished. Uh, the video game Stray, the one with the cat. Oh, the cat. Oh, yeah. um, making me jealous. Yo, it was a really good game. And weirdly, like, I got to the end of it, and the world that they created was legitimately interesting. Um, so, you know, there's some elements of the game that could have been polished a little bit better. So there's some stealth elements. There's some weirdly, like, combat-esque elements as well, which I wasn't expecting. Um But overall, just the story and the exploration and um, the world that they built is actually very interesting. And the reason for the world being the way that it is. And when you get to the end, um, you know, it's it's no spoilers. Yeah, no, no spoilers. It's it's not one of those. It's not one of those stories where it's not a very deep lore. Um, but it's a very unique and interesting world um, that they've created. And I enjoyed my short time there, played it through in about six-ish hours. So it's a relatively short game you can finish in like, you know, a weekend um, if you really, you know, p- uh, put some good time into it. Um, but it was just a solid, fun experience. I enjoyed the platforming, the light puzzle work. Um, it wasn't anything, you know, too breathtaking, but it was just fun and unique and there were some little heartwarming moments, some little light comedic moments of, you know, just being a cat and causing some mischief. Um, so I really I recommend it for anyone who has a chance to play it. Give it a shot. So All right. There you go. I Mikey's think it's on PlayStation 5. I don't know if it's on PlayStation 4 or not. I know it's also on Steam. So uh, so people might have to pick it up on uh, on Steam then. Yeah. So, so it's available in a variety of uh, platforms. Yeah. But I did get to play that, and that was a lot. Oh, it is available on PlayStation 4 as well. So PlayStation 4, 5, and the PC. There you um, go. So go check that out. Um, but that's uh, that's what I did. I also moved um, some furniture, which is o- <laughs> Woo, always, always fun. a fun time. <laughs> in the middle of a heat wave. In the middle of a heat wave. It was, Good it job, was, Mike. It was brutal. But we had some help, so it wasn't too bad. Um, but that's basically that basically took up the weekend. Um, and oh, and my aunt's surprise party. So that was fun. Um, so I was just all over the place doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but what were you up to recently other than trying to dodge the heat as best you could? Yeah, because that that's priority number one. I did not want to deal with uh, the heat. Um, so uh, to combat that, um, me and Rachel started watching The Sandman on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Oh, I knew I forgot to do something. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, I do feel like I'm sort of being turned into a secret Neil Gaiman fan because I followed American Gods, I followed uh, Good Omens. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's give this a shot. You sure. know what's funny? I have all the books, but I haven't wa- I haven't read them, and I also haven't watched the shows. I want to be a Neil Gaiman fan, but you actually are secretly a Neil. See, Gaiman apparently, fan. I, yeah. So far, I, I think you've yeah. done a pretty good job with those shows. I mean, I I don't read. I'm <laughs> I'm bad. I'm I'm, b- I'm bad. I don't. I, you just consume your yeah. uh, your art and media in, in a different format. I, yeah, I, I there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's the way I prefer to do it. I, I yeah. can't sit down and read a book anymore. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm done. 
It's, it's uh, I need sound effects. <laughs> I, I've turned into a basic American. I need, I need flashing lights. You need, yeah, you need all the lights and sound. You're like, ooh, pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've been spoiled. Um, but um, yeah, um, Sandman is a pretty good show. Um, I, I've we we finished. Uh, I think half of it. I think there's ten episodes, and we're on nice. six. Um, it's really a, a well-made show. Uh, I love the cinematography for some of the episodes. Um, it's, 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 it's really clever in some of the things that it does. Um, the one episode that's called 24 seven is amazing. That's, that might be one of my favorite episodes of new TV streaming content that I've seen. Okay. Um, I don't want to give away what happens, but it's very interesting. Um, I will say though, I kind of don't like the Sandman though. (laughs) <laughs> it's oh weird. really like the main character I, yeah like i kind of don't like his character <laughs> is there a particular reason I'm, without spoilers that you can uh, give or is it just a general vibe th- yeah vibe and like i i don't i mean I, i'm sure he's supposed to be playing it like this but like he's very super emo and like he, he, he talks like if like batman became emo he has like a he has like a very deep voice, and uh, how am I supposed to know if this was a dream? <laughs> like, 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 it's like, w- are you trying to be Batman? Like, Emo bat. So yeah. instead of a cowl, he just has hair. Is his mask? Yeah, when he does, he has long black hair. Oh man, it's, yeah. So emo Batman. He's like emo Batman. Yeah. I'm like totally Batman. No, that's too much. That's, even that's too oh, much emotion. Really? Like, it's very much like. I'm trying to fulfill the dream world. <laughs> like, like, what? What was that? Can you speak I up louder? I am the Batman. <laughs> I oh. am in control of this dream world. Like, okay, all right. Yeah, so is he supposed to be completely, like, emotionless? Is that his thing? Like, he's supposed to be, like, this detached? Because he's the god of dreams. sleep and dreams, right? Yeah, so that... I guess it does make sense, but at the same time, I don't know. I can see how it would be hard to latch on to yeah. a character. This is always the tricky thing when you do non-conventional characters like that that, were, that are supposed to be apathetic or distant is because viewers need an in, right? They need somebody's hook on shoes to. that they can slip yeah. into. And when you have a character that's intentionally apathetic or if you have a sociopathic or psychopathic character, it makes it harder for viewers, readers, whatever, to find something to connect with. Yeah. That's kind of the whole point. But, right. you know, maybe it'll end up being an interesting character study by, you know, episode 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I still have four, I think, four episodes left. So okay. I still got time. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, meh. Like, I'm glad, not digging sh- it. I'm, I'm glad that even though the show is called The Sandman, it's not like entirely focused on him they do a good job like explore explaining the world and going into like other supporting characters well that's Um, good that's good there's a couple people i'll just say there's a couple of i guess antagonists for lack of a better word that i'm like i want them to win go ahead (laughs) let's let's see let's have some s up Okay. I'm trying not to curse too. Yeah. Because that's another thing too is they curse all the time in the mo- in the show because it's Netflix. Right. We try to be somewhat. We're trying to friendly. yeah, trying to hold it in a little like bit. Like weird family friendly. Yeah. Like awkward. Like you sit down friendly. and listen to the show with the family and you're like, maybe maybe I shouldn't have played that odd news. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. But uh, so yeah, I mean overall it's a good show. I would recommend it. Okay. Um, it's so just I'm kind of a little just meh when it comes to the main character. So, do you find that detracts too much? Like, if the series ended with the last episode you watched, and, you know, does the main character detract that much from it? Or is it just, you know, a tolerable uh, sort yeah, of, Yeah, tolerable. Like okay. Yeah, it's just more of, that's not my thing. Okay. All right. I'm, you, you know me, I'm more into, like, the Al Pacino, hoo like Yeah. <laughs> I want someone... Ver- boisterous you I want, want you want a Saul Goodman or yeah. like the the uh, Roy guy from Logan Succession. Roy Logan yeah, Roy. yeah. You, you like loud brash like one-liner type yeah. yeah whereas not emo sort of I am the master of the dreams uh, yeah like it's just yeah too emo I, for but I, like, I get it too because it, it he is supposed to it's like you said he is supposed to be kind of distant from humans so right. he is supposed to have like a detached viewpoint of dreams and stuff like that so it makes sense but at the same time it's just like 
even yeah. though sometimes it makes sense narratively, it might not make sense craft wise. Yeah, you know, like, and that's that's the thing. You have to walk that fine balance between like, okay, you're so committed to the to the to the character, are you sacrificing the craft? Right. So, so I'm I'll be very interested to watch it to see if my views align with yours. I think when you watch like. it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's, it's hard to describe, but I think that's the closest thing I can come to it. That yeah, it, it, it's it, weird, but that it makes criticism sense, but made me want to watch it more. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you, you might, yeah, you might really love it. Yeah, it makes sense, but it's just not my personal. Yeah, brand of protagonist. No, that makes sense. Yeah. It's tough to get into a character like that. Yeah, but overall, it's still a good show. It's fantastically shot. Nice. Um, just some of the elements are crazy, and it's up my alley when it comes to some of the elements. Like, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm just going to just say the episode 24-7 is amazing. I'll leave it at that. All right. All right, there you go. Enough of our reviews, what we've been up to this past weekend. We need to get into the news at hand and update you on a couple of things. So let's launch into the first batch of topics. Uh, they, they revolve around sports, so we call it the Sports Sampler. So you're not good at sports. It's a very small part of life. Sports, 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 sports. In your face. Ha <laughs> ha Sports coming at you in your face. There you go. Uh, for their I'm video. Just, our I'm smiling because yeah, the video stuff. Our video feed, yeah, we're, we're incorporating some new uh, graphics to kind of block off and let you know when each segment uh, is about to take place. Uh, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. We've kind of had to, like, retool the show. So there you go. There's, like, one of the ways we're trying to build up the show again Yeah. Uh, with that little feature there. Uh, but, no, we need to get into sports news. And uh, this first topic is baseball. But we're going to really get into the meta baseball here because we had an incident in Major League Baseball that I can't believe happened. I think, actually, when you boil this down, this might actually be a case of mild mass hysteria. And I'm not being exagger. I don't think I'm being that much uh, exaggeration on this. It is ridiculous. Um, that is because uh, during the Astros game uh, last Wednesday night, um, <laughs> this actually happened uh, in the middle of the game. Uh, Jordan Alvarez somehow was clever enough or just boring enough. I, I don't know. Just just somehow crafty enough to get a opportunity at a fourth strike when he should have gotten uh, a third strike call and be out and uh, go back into the dugout. Uh, let, let me go by play by play here. Um, obviously I can't show you the game cause that would be copyright. Uh, but let me break it down for you. So first up he's, he's up to bat. First is a called ball. So okay. count is one and oh, right. All right, good. Everybody on the same page. Good. One and oh, uh, then he doesn't swing, but it's a called strike. Okay, so one, one. One and one. Everything makes sense. All right, so far so good. We're all on the same page. Right. Good. All right. Third pitch, he makes contact, but it goes uh, into foul territory, and they cannot make a play on it, so it's simply ruled foul ball. Count okay. should be one, two. one and two, because right. foul, foul ball, if it's the if it's first, first two strikes. Counts right. as a strike. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't be called you can't be called out on a, on foul, a foul ball unless someone catches the foul ball. Right. Okay. So we're all in agreement. Okay. It's one and two. One and two. Right. Fourth pitch is a called strike. Okay. So the count is now one and three. <laughs> and everyone which, knows after which, one and three you get your fourth <laughs> your fourth at bat. You know, because the old saying goes, four strikes and you're out of the old ball game. Yeah, duh. <laughs> no. One, two, three. Three and four <laughs> strikes, you're out of the. <laughs> wow, what a cadence. <laughs> what a cadence, yeah. Yeah. So n apparently, just everybody, everybody just let it go, and, and Jordan stays in the batter's box. And that's the craziest thing to me because when you told me the story, I'm thinking about professional. I understand, like, maybe Little League, the kids are running around, they're screaming, everybody's eating popsicles, everybody's like got sticky jam fingers from the food they're eating. Like, I understand. You make a mistake, whatever. Who cares? They're like seven. I understand maybe even high school. You got parents umping. You got the kids running the scoreboard. Nobody knows what's happening. But when you get to the pros, people... How about independent baseball leagues? I was at a, at a baseball game in Delaware for an independent baseball league. I could understand it happening there. I mean, yeah, right. It's They don't have the same polish. Right. They don't have a scoreboard guy or anybody like that. Right. But when you get to the pros... Everybody involved in this production is making significant amounts of money. 
right? You're talking about all of the people up in the booth. You're talking about the scoreboard keepers. You're talking about managers, umps, players. A stadium full of 40,000 people and television audiences. And, like, everybody just kind of like, huh. Oh, well. Yeah. Like, is I guess baseball... I, I guess it's time for another strike. Why right. not? Yeah. And he... Nobody t- noticed. Yep. So the pitcher gets off a, a fifth pitch, which he grounded and turned into an out anyway. So I guess, you know, everything, you know, all's well that ends well. But, like, what did the commentators say? Like, people calling it on the radio or something. They're like, oh, that's third strike, and he's at bat again. And that's <laughs> strike four. Of course, classic four strike. Like, yes. what, like what, did, what did they say? What yeah. happened? They just said he stayed in the batter's box. Like, nobody um, had anything... And 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 the best part is is if you go to the Baseball Reference Almanac, they have it listed down pitch by pitch. Right. And when you get to this fifth, this mysterious unknown fifth pitch, it just simply says ball remains in play. So they're, they just that's just the digital version of a shoulder shrug. Yeah, like we can't describe it. This is not supposed to happen. So it's just it's amazing, and like you said, we're, this is a major league baseball game. There's so many people the, the, involved. In major league in baseball is supposed to have like at least like six umpires at at every game, but like, and th- then they have like a New York center, right? And there's that is mu- supposed to be watching the game, and there's multiple managers on both sides. On, on, on both sides, you got all the players. I mean, is nobody the scoreboard keepers, the announcers, yeah, scoreboard the, people, the te- the people running the actual television broadcast? Like nobody, the Mexican, bro- uh, the Spanish broadcasting booth. Like, what did the tele- what are they doing? What did what did the ticker on the TV show one and three, and then one and four? <laughs> yes, everything is. Did everybody just like play along? Like, oh well. The probability on one four-wheel machine is a million and a half to one. On three machines in a row, it's in the billions. It cannot happen. Would not happen. You f- Momo, what's the matter with you? Yeah, that's what, Momo. I, that's what I want to say to at Major League Baseball right now. You're all a bunch of Momos. What the, what the hell happened? It just makes no sense. And my big question, or rather, this is something you brought up uh, because you knew that I would find it entertaining. Um, how goddamn boring is baseball that everybody... Just one didn't notice and two didn't care. Yeah, I, I was like, could you imagine if this happened in football? No, this cannot have happened in football. There would be outraged. Somebody would die. Saints <laughs> fans would still be complaining. Yes. <laughs> Just got to jab one in the New Orleans. I could have picked Dallas. I could pick any fan base. Philadelphia fans never complain. Though. Yeah, of course not. Um, <laughs> but like, the world just kept on turning. Yeah. Nobody cares, and to me, that's a sign that like. Maybe it's not as serious and as well polished and as integrity filled as the MLB would have us believe. Integrity of the game, my ass. Yeah, just gave a random player four strikes and nobody said or did anything or noticed. Yeah, this is utterly embarrassing for umpires. You know what would prevent that? Uh, uh, digital strike zones. Uh, robo umps. Robo umps. Oh my. Oh yeah, remember that? I every time I think about how regressive baseball is. But baseball is it annoys the hell out of me. Look, I, I don't want to be one to take away jobs in this current climate, <laughs> and we're going to be entering into a recession and all this horrible yeah. economic news and stuff. Right. But at just like every other month since baseball has resumed since COVID, I feel like the umpires have just made like themselves obsolete like every other month. There's been like a A to B mid-tier story almost every month about how bad an umpire is or how lackadaisical an umpire crew has been. It's yeah. getting ridiculous. Like they're, they're, they're literally yeah. making the case against themselves. And I, it's not to say that reps in other sports are infallible, you know, far from it, but I think it's the lack of urgency and the lack of attention that I think bugs me the most. Yeah. It literally is just, because getting the details right because when refs make a bad call in a football game everybody gets together they huddle their heads like oh which you know was it a catch was it not a catch or there's always some outrage afterwards and you know they send out a memo to all the teams like hey make sure this doesn't happen again in baseball it's kind of just like whoops like george carlin you know <laughs> in baseball you make an error whoops like yep. <laughs> I, more and more i've always loved that george carlin so look it up uh baseball versus football yeah. fantastic classic skit by george carlin but he kind of, my sentiment is the same. Like, football is a technological struggle. It is a modern sport. Baseball is antiquated, outdated, and frankly, really boring. And, and I think even the players and managers and, and umps 
they couldn't be bothered to keep track of it. Yeah, stories like this is literally like I texted Mike. This is literally like evidence A. Like y- this is th- this is what you need to show. You're getting paid like, tens of millions do- tens of millions of dollars to play and pay attention to the sport, and nobody is. And nobody is. Hey, something Can else. I get paid tens of millions of dollars to actively not pay attention at my job? Like Something else, too. This would never happen in golf. No. Baseball is now more boring than golf. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that you know what? leap of logic. As long as we can team up against baseball, I'll take it. Because go- golf, this would never happen. You cannot skirt the rules in golf. Somebody has pointed it out. That oh you you moved the ball wrong or you you, you did uh, did you, something you to talked in the past about how there's like special rules for if the ball is like moved by an ant chewing yeah. a blade of grass yeah like, like <laughs> to the to, east <laughs> to the east like the ball is, is on an ant hill do the ants count as in play or or mole hill or whatever it was like yeah there was something some where stupid uh, yeah there was something where they're trying to roll an impediment due to. Uh, an animal, and it was something like, "Well, does an ant count as an animal?" Yeah, like, is yeah. an ant hill an animal? Like yeah. what? Like <laughs> baseball? They can't even figure out their basic rules, and yep. in golf, they're coming up with rules for like every act of nature imaginable. Yeah. Well, remember, re- re- really, you want to dig into our history? Go to our YouTube channel and look way back into the we're archives. Talking about the World War II rules, we had the yeah those those. Golf made rules specifically during World War II. What was it? If the ball was moved <laughs> from the explosion of a bombing or something, yeah. like, it's a one-stroke <laughs> penalty. Like, sorry, I was just trying to dodge the shrapnel and the bombs. And forget baseball. Every time we talk about baseball, we should just play that segment again <laughs> for the for the audience. Yeah, look look back in our YouTube history for our full segment. We did. Yeah, there was a. Th- all right, so just real, make it clear. There was a golf course, I believe, somewhere down south that was worried if World War II was going to happen in the state. <laughs> they came up with like a list of precautionary rules, right? In case, in case, in, <laughs> in case, case Hitler, the Nazis invaded <laughs> the golf course. Yeah, in case Hitler wanted to play a couple rounds before the, he took over DC. There were rules like what happens if there's tanks? What happens if your ball lands in a crater? Are you golfing <laughs> on a shelled out golf course? You have nothing better to do. Go hide in your bomb shelter. What are you doing? <laughs> but like baseball can't even be bothered to get normal peacetime rules correct. Yeah, and I think that's worse. I think yeah. that, that like the the thing with golf, you know, it's a little eccentric. It's a little out there. It might that you know people might view that as a little bit rigidy and up and boring and uppity. But I'll tell you what, this story where everybody had a date had a case of mild uh, hysteria and not recognizing that there was three strikes called in that game and nobody batted an eye. That is ridiculous to happen at the major league level. Yeah, that is bizarre. That, that is, bizarre. is truly bizarre. I, I, I honestly I, actually if anybody's like a social scientist, I'd, they should investigate this case. You might this, be this, you might be right though it's, about it's like it. Being, mi- it's like a mild case of mass hysteria. Well, nobody paid attention to this. I can think exactly what happened with the fans in the stands. They're probably saying, they're probably thinking, "Oh, we must have missed something if the umps or the scoreboard or the managers didn't say anything." So you had a situation in which thirty to forty thousand people were just assumed they saw incorrectly, which is really interesting. It's crazy. You know what I mean? So, anyway. Anyway, yep, crazy story there, and I thought it was perfect for us to talk about. That's why you come to this podcast, because, you know, you could get, like, regular team updates and all that stuff, but we give you the weird stories that nobody's talking about. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or maybe they talk about it once, and then they get rid of it, like, you know, two minutes later. Uh-uh. No, we, we do a That's deep a, dive. This is a story that should be, be, talking, that should be talked about, like, every, se- every Sunday from here on out. That is a Absolutely. ridiculous event. That's that right. happened. Stupid so, baseball. There you go. All right. Let's, uh, I, Mike, thank you for putting up with baseball. Oh, I loved it. But we need to, uh, you know what? Yeah, wait a minute. I'll take that back. That, that was, that was a, you had a little bit of joy in like make, saying baseball was so boring. So oh, no, yeah. I take it back because <laughs> you were happy. So 
you get to continue your happiness, you bastard. And yes. we get to go into football uh, because we have a quick update that we want to bring up uh, about the Sean Watson. Because literally, we called this out on last week's episode. Yep. That news happens during that awkward 24 hours in between from when we record the podcast to when we get it out uh, on Wednesday night. And, of course, uh, it happened literally the Wednesday uh, last week that the NFL officially is going to appeal the Deshaun Watson six-game suspension ruling and push for a year-long suspension. Um, th- I'm glad that they're doing this. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely, I think, the right move. Um, unfortunately, though, the NFL PA and Deshaun Watson are going to fight back. They're probably going to counter sue. Well, if that happens, and if they're stuck in like this legal loophole hell and no decision is made come the second week of September, Deshaun Watson then is technically allowed to play because then no decision was made on his status. Right. So, I mean, there's so many just weird spinning plates happening now between this counter uh, suing uh, and and now the suit (sighs) appeal to the appeal. Yeah. So I I guess let's just get the brass tacks. What do you think just happens when all said and done? Is Um, it going to be a full suspension? Does Watson play week one? I think that um, there's so many outcomes. It's crazy. Eventually the NFL will broker some kind of deal with the NFL PA and Deshaun Watson to find a number of games in between six and 17, because for them, the PR of having Deshaun Watson start week one because of these legal proceedings would be disastrous. The Browns aren't going to take out. The Browns aren't going to suspend him independently. No. Um, So the Browns, you know, I mean, it makes sense for them business wise and, play-wise, I guess, as awful as it is, to just say, you know, to stay completely out of it. But the NFL, they can't afford to have Deshaun Watson start week one for the Browns because the NFL has called the quarterback's actions egregious and it was predatory behavior. So you can't say that and then have a situation in which because of the legal limbo, you have this predatory behavior person playing week one. So they're going to broker a deal where he's probably suspended eight or nine games, cut their losses, make it look like they tried, um, but that they had to play nice uh, with the big bad NFL PA. Uh, it's b- they're not going to get they're not going to get the full. So in the next three weeks, they're not going to get the full season. All right. So if you're going to go that route, something interesting I heard, okay, was that the NFL does not want Watson to play the game against the Texans, which is I think week twelve. Oh, yeah, because that's going to cause a whole massive remember berries that he he didn't play for them the whole season because of all this nonsense. Yeah. So I'm so you think they're going to shoot at least for a 12 game suspension? I'm hearing that if they're going to barter some deal, it's going to have to be at least 13 games. They're not the NFL is not willing to go below that. Wow. I mean, what you just said there makes perfect sense. I think it's week. I think it's week twelve that they face the, against the Texans. The NFL is all about image like that. Yeah. So because if right, if if he comes back and he's playing that game, literally the whole lead up to that game is going to be, hey, remember that awkward time that Deshaun Watson didn't play at all for the Houston Texans, and now he has to face his former team. It's week 13. Oh, it's week 13. Yeah, so that means... So you'd have to have minimum 13-week suspension. Ugh. Maybe 14 just to play it safe. Um, yeah, that's at Houston as well. That's all the way into the first week of December. Um, I, I don't know that they get that. Go from 6 to 13. That's a big jump. That's a big jump. And <sighs> it's just such a mess. Do they have the option of the commissioner's exempt list? I guess he could because that is, if I'm remembering correctly, separate from a suspension. Right. Basically, like you put him on the exempt list, gets paid. He just can't play. Well, he's getting paid no matter he's what. He's getting paid no matter what because of the way the contract is. If any, you know, Deshaun Watson aside, horrible human being should be punished. Um, the Browns, I feel like, are somewhat uh, complicit in this. Oh, yeah. 
the oh, way yeah. that they structure the this other, contract. The other thirty owners, they are they absolutely hate Haslam's for giving oh, Deshaun Watson this kind of contract. This is absolutely atrocious. The fact that they, no, no matter what the NFL to, does, to Deshaun y- Watson gets paid. To, to use a, a, a phrase from Logan Roy in Succession, they. If if the Browns were a girl, they pretty much just laid down and just spread their legs open. Like the, the, the Deshaun Watson literally was able to 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 write his own contract, thirty million, and all of it guaranteed. All of it guaranteed, not just the way that it was guaranteed, but the way that it was um, partitioned out. The way that it's all like signing bonus, so yeah. his salary it's is not only, salary. It's only one million dollars this year. So even if he sus- he could be suspended a whole season and only lose one million out of like. 40 some million. Yeah, it's, it's nothing. It's chump change. Yeah, I feel like the Browns he still sh- gets 39 million dollars this year yeah. whether you like it or not. I feel like the Browns should be punished somehow for like the insidious I'll tell you what. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what. I bet what? the other 30 teams they're not going to tr- make a single trade with the Browns that benefits them at all this year. <laughs> I mean, maybe like, like just a little sp- spinning note here. Yeah. We we had a little minor story that Kareem Hunt uh, their second running back is apparently disappointed with the with the franchise, and he's asking for a trade. Well, that's actually the three minute drill, but oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. Whoops. <laughs> well, let's just say I'll. We don't need the three minute drill. Let's just talk about it. Well, yeah. Uh, so yeah, cause I, I, I'm going to link it together inadvertently. I'm, I, yeah. I jumped ahead. I didn't realize it. No, that's all right. But basically, uh, Kareem Hunt, he's uh, upset with the organization, and he's asking for a trade because he's in the last year of his contract. Right. And he knows that if they're not resigning him, then he's going to be a free agent anyway, so why bother? But at the same time, he's, he's still on the last year of his contract. He's he's tied to the Browns, whether he likes it or not, unless they trade him. Browns have said they're not trading him. Either you play for us or you're not playing at all. Right. Well, if the Browns get desperate and they do try and trade him, uh, or lure him as trade bait. I guarantee you, the other thirty teams are not going to make a, a reasonable trade for Kareem Hunt. They're gonna they'll they'll come with him and be like, "Yeah, six round pick, you bastards." You know, nobody is going to actually willingly trade in good faith with the Browns for the next year or two because well, I, of, because I, of the way this went down. They I screwed over how how future quarterback contracts are made. They screwed over the expectations of quarterbacks coming in the future. Like you, like you're worried about with Jalen hurts coming up. Yeah. That's yep. going to Jeffrey Lurie's going to uh, is definitely angry at the way this went down. Cause if he wants Jalen hurts as a franchise quarterback, he's going to have to give him a lot of guaranteed money like this. The Browns, even if they don't get actually officially punished by the NFL, they are going to feel the ramifications of this for the next three years. And I'll tell you what, they better actually win a damn Super Bowl or, or have something to show for it. Because if they don't, Jimmy Haslam is, has just shown that he is a piss poor excuse uh, for an NFL owner, uh, considering how this went down and this crazy damn contract that he let Deshaun Watson essentially just walk all over him for. So it's yeah. been just. Uh, and then on top of that, you think about the fact they had Baker Mayfield. It wasn't like they were in a desperate situation for quarterback. Right. They, they had somebody that brought them their first playoff win in 20 years. They had a, <laughs> they had a they solid starter. Away. Yeah, they had a solid starter, and they threw it away for someone who had known legal issues, and they threw it away in the weirdest, most controversial way possible. We I just went on a three minute rant. <laughs> Screw the three minute drill. I went on a three minute rant. Yeah, we just, don't need we don't just, need drills. We got to, rants. Just to show you how ridiculous this situation truly is, it's bizarre, and I've never seen anything like it. Well, and I, I guarantee you, the other thirty owners haven't seen anything like that, and they're going to use that anger and 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 uh, just sheer uh, just disapproval. To not trade in good faith with with the Browns anymore. I, I the mean, Browns I, are going to be feeling this for the years to come. I hope you're right, but part of me thinks that some owners like Jerry Jones, the Jerry Jones of the world, um, that they won't care. That they will still make deals with the Browns, and they'll actually come out ahead because if nobody else is willing to make deals with them, they'll be able to get easy deals made with them. You know, there's always going to be. Uns- but that will still punish the Browns. You think it'll still punish the Browns? That, yeah, because like for example, for Cream Hunt. I guess if the only trade partner is, you know, a Jerry Jones yeah. or like Th- screw you, six round pick, that's it. Take yeah. it or leave it. Uh, I guess I guess there's so. going to be no room for negotiation. W- what room do you have to neg- negotiate with? Everybody else it, it th- is not going to want to trade with you. I I hope you're right. I just feel like 
there's probably more owners out there that look are at, willing look to at, ignore look, that. What did what did Baker actually go for for Carolina? Fifth round pick? It was like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There's your example. Nobody actually wants to make a a deal that helps out the Browns. None yeah. of the thirty owners are going to approve that. And that's a good point. Baker Mayfield went for a fifth round pick. Remember when we traded Sam Bradford back in the day for a first rounder? Yeah. Like because that was a deal that benefited both sides. Yeah. The Browns say goodbye to that. You're not going to get that with the other 31 teams in the league. It, 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 they've really shot themselves in the foot. It is bizarre how far they've fallen, especially considering, what, was it two seasons ago they had a road playoff win against the Steelers? Yeah. Man. They were, you, they were ready to turn things around, and they just did, did the most Browns thing ever. Yeah. They, they were actually on the verge of a culture change. Like, things were, were actually getting... Things can't be that on the good rebound, in Cleveland. But no, things can't be good in Cleveland. It nope. just can't because Jimmy Haslam messes messes it up, and 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 that organization does. I just the I, whole thing from top to bottom. That damn contract was the the it's, a, it's atrocious. The the, 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 the poop it, stain on the floor. It's atrocious. That was the the. There's, I can't believe like they agreed to that. I know it, it's atrocious again. From, uh, a financial standpoint, from how an much ethical was guaranteed? Two hundred and fifty? No, two hundred thirty. All of it. Two hundred thirty million. Two hundred thirty million dollars. Again, I just want to reiterate this point: two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed. That means somebody, when they signed the contract with Deshaun Watson, somebody in the Browns organization had to run over to the Cleveland bank. I don't know wherever the Cleveland Browns keep their money. Had to run over to the bank, withdraw two hundred thirty million dollars in cash. <laughs> And put it in an escrow account because he gets that money, period. That there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. It is utterly bizarre, this situation. I, I, everything about it. When you really break this down from start to finish, it is nuts. Absolutely nuts. I can't believe I went on a rant about that. You went on. This should have been a what's pissing me off, but yeah. Because got three minute drills. No, but you're absolutely it's just, right. It's, it's when you just think about it from start to finish, it is ridiculous. I yeah. can't I can't believe we've made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> in the, the story. Yeah. This is, you know what? Speaking of everything going back, this is going to be 10 years, 15 years down the road. This is going to be a Netflix series or a Hulu <laughs> series or something. Just how bizarre this case is. It's so ridiculous. It is. It's it's very ridiculous and it's very troubling as well. That contract is awful from a financial standpoint, an ethical standpoint, a, a, a football business standpoint. Um, you know, you're rewarding the wrong type of players and you're simultaneously ruining it, ruining the quarterback market at the same time. Yep. Like it hurts everybody. It hurts everyone. It benefits no one except the only person who shouldn't be benefiting from anything. Yeah. It's like the it only benefits to Sean Watson because he gets his money no yeah. matter what happens. So I hope that you're right. And Teams maybe, don't trade and with maybe, them. maybe the Browns sniff a Super Bowl run. Do you really think so, though? Just Deshaun Watson? Maybe. That's in why, that's in why that I, division with the Bengals and the Steelers? That's why I'm extremely going with maybe. That's a tough division. Even when the teams are bad, they're still tough. Like, the Steelers are not a pushover. You got the Ravens and the Bengals who are always competing now. Yeah, well, the Bengals are going to be good for next five years. They're going to be good for five a couple. Years. Yeah. They're going to be good. Ravens, they still never put together, like, a good Wide receiving core. Yeah, I don't understand. They they're have like the Eagles in 2000. They have Lamar Jackson, and they're just wasting him. Yeah. Um, Steelers, I, that's Steelers may one. be the odd one out there, uh, weirdly enough. They don't know. They have a weird quarterback Who's their quarterback? Chart. So Is it Mason Rudolph? Actually, I, no, I just read the, the recent depth chart. Right now, it's Mitchell Trubisky at one. Oh, God. Uh, Mason Rudolph at two, and Kenny Pickett at three. Which is they kind have of, no idea what they're doing. Well, that's kind of a bad indication on Kenny Pickett. I mean, he was drafted uh, he's pretty third, high. He's yeah. third. Yeah. I guess they want to start with proven talent. Yeah, but he's not um, two. He's, uh, he's yeah. For him being, wasn't he was first round draft pick? I think yeah, I think he was. Uh, they have a former first round pick from another team, their own first round pick, and then Mason Rudolph just hanging out there. Yes, yeah, the so they love Mason Rudolph. I don't know why. He seems they, like a they love meathead him. idiot. They love him. He took one for the team. He took the helmet. That's he took why. the helmet. <laughs> he, he took the helmet to the face, and they, they love him for it. So he, he'll forever be number two if he, if he stays there in, in, in Steeler land. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. That, but whole, that whole division outside of the Bengals is just awful. Well, 
Uh, I mean, I mean, like in on, some on a way, per, in on some a per, way, shape, or form, on a personal hatred level, in some yeah. way, shape, or form, they're yeah. all not doing well. Yeah. But yeah, the Ravens. Yeah, that's another one. The Ravens. They feel like they should be able to get something together, and they just they they, yeah. they trade away their their number one wide receiver. What? <laughs> <laughs> you literally just got somebody to, yeah. to help you in the one area you need, and then they trade them away. Huh? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, that's, teach their own. That's why I'm not a GM. Apparently, all we know is that the Browns continue to Browns it up, um, and I really hope they get their comeuppance because Deshaun Watson deserves to get punished. The Browns deserve to get punished. Well, um, the, the, that's what I, that was my overarching is that they are kind guard. of goal is that whether they like it or or not or whether they know it or not or whether you know it or not, the Browns are going to be punished for this. The other I, owners I are hope not. I hope you're right. I'm telling you, they're, they don't. They do not like this as much as we do. Especially, especially think of, think of any yeah. team right now that is going to have to deal with a quarterback contract in the, in the next, next year or yep, two. Yep. They are going to hate the Browns for what they've done. They are not going to want to trade with the Browns on friendly terms. I mean, the Browns were the latest um, perpetrator of this, but we all know who started the trend. The one, the only, <laughs> Satan himself, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> he started. That was the first time I have ever heard the words fully guaranteed contract ever uttered with Kirk Cousins. Do you, you want to go on a three-minute Not Tom rant? Brady, not Aaron Rodgers, not MVP quarterbacks, not Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins, the career 8-8 eight and eight quarterback. I think his record is like just, it's like 501. <laughs> 90 plus million dollars fully guaranteed. It's a winning quarterback. People people criticized Sam Bradford for running away with all this money. I think Kirk Cousins is worse than Sam Bradford because people knew exactly what they were getting with Sam Bradford. They gave it to him anyway. Kirk Cousins is just tricking everybody and thinking he's some sort of amazing quarterback, but he's not. He puts up garbage time numbers with garbage time players, takes every team that he's been on and leads them exactly to the place where they started. Like, nothing in my mind is worse than a quarterback who takes your team and just does absolutely nothing and just continues to stay along that same plateaued path. So him and Deshaun Watson could go rot in hell together. <laughs> All right, there you go. Mikey got his rant, too. There, I don't know why he had, to, uh, he had to put in Kirk Cousins. They because, had, just when you yes, the it, Browns ruined the quarterback market, but Kirk Cousins started it. He may, he have, he may have started it, but... He put the term into the ether, and then people are like, hold on, this is something that can happen. But the Browns did kick the door off the hinges. Yeah, they, they're the ones that truly added gasoline to the fire. The three quarterbacks who are most at fault, Kirk Cousins for the concept of fully guaranteed contracts, uh, Patrick Mahomes for just the insane capital and cap space devoted to quarterbacks, and Deshaun Watson for now combining the two previous well, offenders. That, wait, wait. Shouldn't that be Aaron Rodgers? Because I, Aaron Rodgers had a mega contract. Yeah, pa didn't Patrick Mahomes have his? He, he did recently. But yeah. Aaron Rodgers was the first one to really get like a thirty, thirty. Uh, he was the first one to hit thirty million a year. Yeah, but Patrick Mahomes was the first one to crest two hundred, wasn't he? All together, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know where you are in this arbitrary system. You, I you dislike blame a lot the of following quarterbacks. No. Yeah, <laughs> right. I feel like this is really just a personal bit that Mike wants to take down a couple quarterbacks uh, while he's got the moral high ground here. But nevertheless, that's our Deshaun Watson Browns update. It all merged into one giant soup. So take it as you will. A poop soup. <laughs> that is a, it's a brown soup. <laughs> We need to stop the sports sampler. Yeah, you're We're right. We're talking about poop soup. Yeah, we got to <laughs> <laughs> stop on that note. Dear God. Yeah, we gotta. We, we need to take a break after all that craziness. Um, we'll take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because we still got the entertainment entree and then the non-portrait cookie odd news coming your way when we get back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Ready for the weekend? Happy Friday. Hi, my name's Marie, and I'm an artist who's been making Happy Friday doodles every week for over seven years. And now you can own my art collection in this volume one and volume two art series. These doodles span across multiple themes, yearly festivities, 
various countries, languages, and more. Both coffee table books have something for everyone and are the perfect conversation starter or gift for a friend. Really, anyone who enjoys a good weekend. Available on Amazon, Ingram, Book Baby, Barnes & Noble, and more. Visit happyfridaydoodles.com forward slash books and get your copies today. Let's celebrate the best day of the week. Happy Friday. Uh, we're going to talk about 22-year-old Matthew Kyle Lethem. And he decided to call police at 4.45 in the morning because he couldn't find a ride home after the bar at 4.45 in the morning. Um, but oh that was that is not the actual oddity of this story. Police uh, encountered uh, Matthew Lethem uh, on the scene, and that's when they noted that this dude actually has a tattoo of the state of Florida in between his two eyebrows. Oh my God. Yes. And I, oh have, my. And I have his mugshot. So here we go. He's literally Florida man. Yes. He's like a superhero Florida man. And that is like his logo. Is, he is Mr. Florida man. So, I mean, you know, it's the most harmless Florida story we've ever had. Yeah, except for the fact that that dude has a tattoo stupid. that will last the rest of his life that he cannot hide. You cannot will... undo that. Every job interview he goes to, the very first thing they're going to see and question is the Florida tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally like, you, I, can I touch it? Like, it's right there. <laughs> you know the scene in Austin Powers Gold Member, the guy who has the mole? Yeah. Molly, 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 molly. Yeah, it is that, except with Florida on his forehead. Is anybody more proud of their home state than that guy? I nope. can't say. I can't say. Nope. I can't think of anybody else. No, nope. so, I, I love Pennsylvania, but not that much. No, I do not want. Pennsylvania is a big state too. I do not want that on my forehead. <laughs> it's very square or yeah. rectangular. rectangular. It would. Yeah. What's yeah. the weirdest state to get tattooed to a forehead? I think. What do you think would be the weirdest one? I mean, I think Flor I think Florida, because the way it's shaped. Florida's pretty weird. Um, California, Michi California, Michigan would be weird because it's it's a it's a it's like it's a very long, and then yeah. it, and then it juts out. No, Michigan. Ooh, yeah. Oh, uh, because they got Michigan. all those like Great Lakes and stuff. Yeah, and it's split in half. Ugh, yeah, that would not be good. That'd be a weird one. Yeah. Oklahoma. Alaska. Oh, Oklahoma. I was going to say Alaska. You, Oklahoma, you have to get <laughs> the box, and then you have to get that little dinky panhandle that goes the other half of your head. You're literally making yourself uh, a unibrow, and then like it has like a little hat on it. Yeah. Ew. What about Alaska? You have that whole chain of islands coming yeah. off the side. It's going to like go around the side of your head almost. Mm, yeah. This is the dumbest conversation we've ever had in in eight, <laughs> in eight years of podcast. I think it's safe to say that talking about the weirdest state to tattoo to your forehead, probably the dumbest thing we've ever <laughs> talked about. <laughs> it's 2021, man. <laughs> And we were like, sense. we were like actually analyzing. You're like, oh yeah, and the islands, and then we're like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What is there is something there's something fundamentally broken with us, Rich, in 2021. <laughs> it's 2021. <laughs> Nothing makes sense anymore. It's the that pandemic. Simple. The pandemic's gone on too long, Rich. We've 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 hit a breaking point. Yeah. All right. This Next is... week we're both going to show up with with states tattooed to our foreheads. Dear God.
we're back here on the Crispy Noodle Podcast. We both had some crazy rants there with the Browns. But we took a breather. Take that, Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> we had enough of your crap. Uh, but now we got to move on from the realm of sports. Uh, and instead, we have to go into the next part of our show where we go over some movie, TV, video games, celebrity news, stuff like that. Folks, it is time for the entertainment entree. And now, the latest in movies. The Simpson guy writes to movies. Dear Die Hard, you rock. Especially when that guy was on the roof. Music. I know what that is. That's music. Video games. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Celebrities. You really know Warren Beatty? Yes, I do. I took a leak next to him once at the Golden Globes. And more. You are the all singing and all dancing crap of the world. This is the Entertainment Entree. All right, Entertainment Entree officially locked and loaded. Uh, and the first bullet <laughs> is uh, the segment where Mike is going to let you know uh, what you need to keep an eye out for this upcoming weekend with uh, movies, TV, video games, stuff like that. It's time for Mike's This Week in Entertainment. All right, Mikey, what do you got? All right, first up this week in entertainment on television, Bo Burnham, The Inside Outtakes comes to Netflix this week. This is uh, just over an hour of unreleased content from the outstanding pandemic era comedy special slash social commentary piece uh, from last year. It's the same content that dropped on YouTube and Spotify uh, earlier in the summer, but now you can watch it on Netflix as well. I'm really eager to, to check this out. I saw that it dropped. I didn't listen to it, but I will probably uh, check it out on Netflix just to see the, the whole presentation. Yeah, it was amazing when that came out, what, a year ago? Yeah. I mean, it, absolutely it was, breathtaking It was stuff. perfect. It came right out towards the end of the, of the COVID lockdown and stuff yeah. like that. It was uh, the... The special that we didn't know we needed, but exactly. it was awesome. Exactly. So I'll be really interested to see the stuff that didn't make the cut and, you know, maybe get see why it didn't make the cut, uh, depending on how it is. But go check it out. I think it might be worth a watch. Bo Burnham, the inside outtakes coming to Netflix this week. Elsewhere, we have a league of their own coming to Amazon Prime. This eight-episode season is a reboot of the classic movie about the World War II era women's baseball league. Uh, but this is a completely separate piece from the original, meaning that the cast, the characters, and the story will be entirely new. Uh, so go check that out, a league of their own. So that means there's a second women's baseball team that has the same sort of story? No, it's just a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> what? One baseball league, two, two baseball, baseball leagues? Oh! my medication if you want to have a heart-stopping good time go check out a league of their own on amazon prime this week and in video games this is a cool one coming out small little indie game called cult of the lamb coming to all major consoles and pc you play as a little lamb uh, in a sort of fantasy world who is also a cult leader for a weird supernatural being you have to hack and slash your way through dungeons and then take the rewards from those fights to build up your cult and provide housing and farms and other utilities for your growing cult and all your cult members of uh, woodland creatures. It's a weird combination of roguelite hack and slash with like world building, like town management sim. Yeah, it sounds like a like a, like an Age of Empires real time strategy game. But where you play as a lamb who's also a cult leader. And you can, like, sacrifice your cult followers or, like, use special, I don't know, like, cult abilities to brainwash people. You have to manage their happiness. And it's just such a unique-looking little indie game. So uh, if that sounds like something that you want to spend a little bit of time uh, as a distraction on, go check out Cult of the Lamb coming to all major consoles and PC this week. And that's what we're looking forward to this week in entertainment. All right, Mikey, thank you for that segment this week in entertainment. All right, 
Uh, the big news in the entertainment world, probably one that you at least saw a headline on or something if uh, you're a fan of HBO Max, uh, because uh, this is uh, pretty big news, especially if you're a fan of uh, that streaming platform, uh, because uh, Discovery uh, has essentially bought and merged with HBO Max, and there's going to be some some changes happening around yeah. the bend yeah not all of them positive changes yeah. so hbo max has been in the news recently some of you may have heard about it uh news of its impending doom basically um people are wondering is this going to be the first major streaming service to completely shutter i don't think that's the case just yet but some of these moves are cause for concern so like rich men mentioned um uh, Warner Media and uh, Discovery merged, um, so that means there's big changes at HBO and for HBO Max specifically with a new focus on the bottom line and quote-unquote belt tightening. So this is in response, remember, last year it was awesome where we got all of those m new release movies day and date with a theatrical release on yeah. HBO Max. That's how I watched Dune, it's how I watched That's how I watched uh, Matrix. Mortal Kombat, Matrix, all these, you know, Wonder Woman 84, eh. Yeah. Um, but a lot of really cool movies that you could just watch at home, and it was awesome, and it made HBO Max a destination, right? When Netflix, all they had was reality TV, and everything was put on hold, on HBO Max, you got all these new theatrical releases. Yeah, it was cool. It's what you wanted when you couldn't go to the theaters. Fast forward to now, and the new owners are saying, no more. That cost us theater sales, so we don't want to do it anymore. I think that's short-sighted because what you were doing was you're sacrificing a hit in box office sales to bring in subscribers, which is the real money maker. Why have somebody pay $12 for a single ticket when you have them pay $12 a month? Yep, yep. They don't see it that way. So what they're doing in addition to this in order to cut costs, and this is the big problem. This just happened recently. They announced that they are completely scrapping the already finished Batgirl film as a <laughs> tax write-off. So this is important, folks, because, number one, Batgirl was completely finished. All they had to do was go through a little bit post-production and wrap it up and release it. And it cost about $90 million. Everybody's acting like that's a lot for a superhero film? Uh, yeah. You're telling me Batgirl can't make $91 million in the box office? Yeah, maybe not. Come on. I don't know. There's been way worse movies that made way more. M I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's a, a, a tough target to hit. I don't know. But here's the real issue. They're using it as a tax write-off, which means even though it costs $90 million, they can never monetize the film. It's already finished. All the work's been done. They can never monetize it. They can't release it in theaters. They can't release it on HBO Max. They can't even sell the movie to another studio for them to release. So it pretty much stays in the vault forever and ever. This movie that is already finished, all the hard work by hundreds of cast and crew, just never sees the light of day because they think that it can't make back more than $90 million. I think that's absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Like, even the trashy 2016 I, Ghostbusters made more money and cost more money. I think you have to at least give it a shot. You got to give you it a shot. You got to at least give it a shot and see if it can make $90 million. I, I, I can see the, the apprehension in, in that calculus because I don't – that could be – that could be why they're afraid. Yeah, it, maybe it's not enough. Maybe Batgirl is not strong a uh, not strong enough entity to command a ninety million dollar take in from audiences. So, the twenty sixteen Ghostbusters cost one hundred forty four million dollars. It made two thirty million. But that was also before COVID. I, I you know another thing too. Uh, is you know what? I mean that's fair. Another that's thing fair. too. Yeah, I mean I, I just know for myself. I would imagine you guys at home are also like this too. I'm I'm very picky about what movies I see in the theater now. Like that's a fair if, point. If I'm going to plunker down fifty, sixty dollars on tickets and concession and stuff like that when I go see the movies, it Gas. better. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's another thing too. Um, it better be a movie that I really want to see in the theater. I mean, that's a fair assessment. That's a fair assessment. So, I mean, I I kind of think you. Do you really you think there's not ninety, one million dollars to be made? I think it's a tall ask. 
I, I think it might but, be. But tall enough to completely just vaporize it? Well, I never. Out of existence? I, I, I'll i admit, I, I never knew about this tax loophole that movies can do if it if it doesn't get it released. Was, it, was an, it was an expense. It was a loss. It's a tax write-off. Wow. I never, I never just, I never, I never but thought that was an option. So the reason, I mean, when you put it to, when you put it to that simple calculus, I kind of get it. Well, let me read you Kevin Smith's famous. Director. Don't get me wrong, I still think I it's wrong. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like I think, I think just th- the moral thing is at least give it a shot. Right. But knowing that is the logic and the calculus behind it, I kind of see it. I find it hard to believe it can't make back the cost of the film. I mean, even releasing it on HBO Max will maybe draw in subscribers, drum up hype. Like, there has to be an audience out there somewhere. Um, just because there is a new wave of wanting more representation in film, and this would have done this. I think um, Kevin Smith calls it the Latina background. I think the, the lead actress or some of the characters in the movie. And I have to admit my ignorance on this. I haven't been following the movie. So, you know, I, I'm one of the people that probably would not have gone to see it. But I'm sure there were other people who were dying to see it. Um, but I feel like they're missing an opportunity here. And Kevin Smith touches on it. Um, he recently blasted HBO for canceling um, Batgirl and keeping the Flash. I just want to read That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. And I want to read the quotes They here. should both be canceled. They should. Right. Exactly. Definitely the Flash. The Flash should be canceled. He is. We're, we're going to get into that in a second. Uh. Um, so Kevin Smith says, quote, that is the baffling thing. I don't give an S how bad the Batgirl movie is. Nobody in that movie is complicated or has anything in the real life you have to mark it around. In the Flash movie, we all know there's a big problem. Flash is the reverse Flash in real life. It's an incredibly bad look to cancel the Latina Batgirl movie. I don't give an S if the movie was absolute effing dog s, I guarantee you that it wasn't. The two directors who directed that movie did a couple episodes of Miss Marvel, and it was a wonderful effing show, and they had more money to do Batgirl than they had to do an episode of Miss Marvel, end quote. A lot packed into there. One, he touches on what I was talking about, about it being a bad look to cancel the movie. There is an audience there for it. There have been much worse films released in theaters. Oh, yeah. I do This Week in Entertainment. There's literally not been a movie to talk about in weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, there is, like, complete... Sh- when you talk about, like, schlock... I, again, like, I, I just want to reiterate. My, my, my yeah. agreement was on the calculus that you presented. Right, right. Y- y- when you look at it in dollars and cents, it's easier to not market a film and just take it as a loss, I guess. Right. Than to go through the trouble right. of but in red s- but carpet the, but events. The, but the actual moral high ground, this is wrong. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Especially the other point here that Smith touches on, which is the Flash movie. Uh. The main, the the leading uh. the leading star, um, Ezra Miller, who goes by they, they're, them. Um, go by asshole. Well, <laughs> yes, because I believe they are wanted in several different states for various crimes from. Uh, what was it? Burglary? Felony burglary. Felony burglary to grooming yep. minors yep. to like disorderly conduct. Like Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, and my God. And he also tweeted that he believes the FBI and the Ku Klux Klan are both after him simultaneously. I, <laughs> I don't know how that happens. So Who did you piss off to get both of them on your ass so if that was true? Here's why it's such a bad look, because you're saying Batgirl can't make $91 million. But we can market around grooming minors? Yeah, that, that's got to be canceled, too. It has to be canceled. Yeah. But apparently they're, they are saying it's, it's moving because forward. Because it's the Flash? I don't because know. Because yeah, it's that's, the that's, Flash? That's a weak argument. Let's be honest. That girl. Right? Female superhero. Oh, uh, yes. I, yeah, I, I not a good look. Every time not superheroes come up... That's what happens. Not a good look. Not a good look. It's a bad it's a bad look. But believe it or not, that's not the only bad look that HBO and Discovery have going on because it continues to get worse. Um, I don't know if you want to just jump straight yeah, to ju- just do it. The slideshow that they that they had during their earnings call or whatever. They put up two um <laughs> They're comparing believe. HBO this, was Max. Was this a PowerPoint or this something? Was a, this was a PowerPoint. Oh, my God. So they put up a slide that showed how HBO Max and Discovery Plus 
are, thank you, that what a, look at those advanced visuals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I figure we have the video feed. I might as well give it to them. Yeah, so they put up two uh, lists comparing and contrasting HBO Max and Discovery Plus, saying how they're unique and complementary. And under HBO Max, they have male skew versus female skew for Discovery Plus. And then HBO Max says it's scripted, lean-in viewing, appointment viewing, and Discovery Plus is uh, unscripted. Oh, you mean smart viewing. Smart viewing. Mm -hmm. But apparently the female skewed Discovery Plus is unscripted, lean back, comfort viewing. Um, there's a lot packed in here that, again, it's just a really bad look and, and really shows a lack of tact when it comes to talking about their tar target audiences, right? Yeah. Like, whether or not it's true, maybe more women do like to watch Discovery Plus because a lot of things like 90 Day Fiance, you know, which I know is very popular. Is that, a, is that the one you said is a universe or something? I think it's 90 Day. I, I may be mixing up my shows, but I think they're trying to position their dis their reality shows as universes. The Discovery Universe. What? Dear what God. is this the MCU, an interconnected web of weird reality TV subjects? I don't, I don't know. Well, we can't be as bad as DC. <laughs> right now, I don't think anything can be as bad as DC. They just canceled a bunch of DC shows. Yeah. But they also announced that DC is going to be like on a ten-year timeline roadmap. Like what roadmap? You just blew it up. Yeah, fresh roadmap. Yeah, they're just going to start they're from just scratch. Start they're going to reboot Batman for the fifth oh time, my God. fourth time. What is it now? <sighs> but so I guess the main takeaway here is that fans are worried. HBO Max fans are worried because in addition to all this, you also hear news of, again, the cancellations, but you also have them quietly removing HBO Max original movies. Movies created for the service are just randomly being removed. Like, why? They were already created and released on the service yeah. for the service. Why? Why would that be a problem? Time Warner, who owns HBO Max? Removing the Harry Potter films. Why? They uh, Yeah, they own Harry Potter. They own Harry Potter. It's a Warner Brothers property. Why remove it? Um, Are they going to do another streaming service or some BS? Well, they did announce that Discovery and HBO Max are merging in 2023 mm -hmm. under a new streaming thing. I don't know what it's going to be. Nobody knows what it's going to be, but they are going to merge the services. And fans are worried that the new service, because really... Discovery kind of holds the high ground here. I guess fans are worried that it is going to lean more towards that quote-unquote female-skewed lean-back viewing instead of the lean-in appointment viewing, um, which is still just a yeah. horrible way to put <laughs> to describe your audiences. Lean, but lean in. Yeah, lean I like in. to think about my movies. Yeah. But I also don't like the way that they just are like, Female viewers are lean back, quote unquote. Yeah, dumb. That's viewers. very sexist. It's very sexist, right? Yeah. Yep, very much so. Um, so I don't know. What What do you think? Like HBO Max barely got its feet on the ground. It had some interesting things going for it. A lot of cool series. Don't you dare touch my Succession or Westworld. <laughs> Those are my two shows on HBO Max. You do anything with them, we're gonna have problems. I don't want it, them to sacrifice any of the scripted content because that's why I love going to HBO Max. I love going and for Barry. Forgot about Barry. Barry, no. Barry, one? um, on you know, on my front, I got House of the Dragon. House of Dragons coming out from uh, Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're gonna have House of Chairs now. House of because you have to you have to lean back. <laughs> I have to lean back. You have to lean right. back. So you have to do House of Chairs now. House of Chairs. House of Sofas. <laughs> you can't lean back. You can't lean back on the Iron Throne. There's too many swords poking right. you. So, so you have instead, to you're, you have to lean forward with the Iron Throne. But now the Iron Throne's replaced no. by the chair. Your new show is House of Sofas now. House of Sofas. Sorry, Mike. You have to. That's what you have to watch now. I don't want that. I don't want that to happen, and that's what everybody's worried about: is that there's going to be this shift more towards Discovery because Discovery kind of is running the show now. Um, is HBO Max the first casualty of the streaming wars? Because uh, people are talking about how Netflix is bleeding subscribers. HBO Max now is under threat. Like, have we reached the point of oversaturation, and are streaming services going to now? either become more expensive than cable or just outright shutter. I, I think it could be all the above, actually. Yeah. I mean, Netflix is already, like, 
weirdly expensive. Yeah. Compared to the other service. They're like 20 some dollars now a month. Yep. It's going to yeah, it's like you said, it's going to get to a point where it's more expensive than cable. Yeah, I mean Netflix if you want the 4K plan, which every TV's 4K, you, I mean you should pay for 4K if you got a 4K TV, right? Otherwise you're not getting the most out of it. All the other streaming services are 4K standard. Netflix is like no, 21, 22 dollars a month whatever it is. Um and they're still bleeding subscribers. Now HBO Max is causing this whole... Or uh, <laughs> I, or do I hear uh, a ship in the background? Yar har. <laughs> That's where i Do I'll you like sailing, Rich? Sailing on the TV and movie seas. Yeah? Yar. Yar. Yo-ho. Yo-ho. And I mean, look, you got to do what you got to do. Me laptop. And me laptop, <laughs> yo-ho, our me laptop. Yes, that's all I have to say. That's all you have to say, all right, then. So there you go. That's my final threat. And with, <laughs> with hey, that. There you have it, HBO. <laughs> How dare ye? Rich is coming for you with there his pirate on the high ship seas. on the high seas. That's all I have to say. All right, with that, I think we need to go into our third and final segment. Folks, it is time for the non-fortune cookie odd news. We've been talking about cool and its uh, ramifications and how it applies to the hip scene. But maybe you could give us some examples now of the opposite of cool, uncool. Just exactly what is uncool? My nipples look like milk studs. Holy shnikes. It's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news. It's not of this world. I don't know exactly what it is or what it's doing, but this is not human intelligence, okay? It's not human intelligence we're facing! How you doing? <laughs> See? I'm doing great. I don't make this stuff up. I'll take a pound of nuts. That's a lot of nuts! That'll be four bucks, baby! You want fries with that? <laughs> I've seen the celery dance across the baseball fields. You had me at meat tornado. No, 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 go past this. Past this part. Never play this again. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what does that mean? And now it's time for the non fortune cookie odd news. So sit back, get everything you need to get from the kitchen. Be sure and empty the bladders, go to the bathroom because you're in for hell, right? Ah! Ah! Woo, odd news! That's right, everyone. It's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news. Here in this segment, Rich researches the news. He reads the news, and I react to the news. He finds a weird and wacky story and keeps it hidden from me, which ensures that all of my reactions are my genuine gut reactions to hearing these stories for the very first time. I don't know what's about to happen. You guys don't know what's about to happen. And even Rich doesn't know what's about to happen because these stories always take us down wacky and wild paths, and I'm ready to get started. Do I even need to ask where we're going? Uh, well, actually, just for a little bit, I need to give, do some oh. f- some fan service here, actually. Okay. Uh, because uh, I do need to give a sausage shout out to Joe Chapek. Sausage! Yeah, our, our junior our odd news reporter. reporter yeah, yeah, out on the street. He's, he's whipping up some news content to send to us. Sausage! So there you go. He actually used the hashtag sausage shout out. So really? There oh, you go. Wow. Make that a hashtag now when you submit. Uh, stories to us hashtag sausage shout out nice. so that we get you one of your own when you send in uh, topics for us to discuss sausage! and uh, it's actually going to be appropriate uh, from Joe Chapek he knew what he was doing he, kn- he-, he knows us very well um, he wants us to talk about this story and I want to oblige real quick um, okay. it's a simple story but it's pretty funny uh, because everyone right now is obsessed with uh, the James Webb Space Telescope right now. It's producing right. these vivid images of the universe. and Right. Amazing images that make us question our place in the universe and life. Yeah. And, and, and it's very important. And obviously, Joe Chapek wants us to talk about it um, because, you know, it, it's, it is it makes you ponder, you know, life's mysteries and everything. This is going to take a turn. Well, you know, just hold just walk with me for a minute okay. here with this. Um, Because, uh, you know, one of the things that looks really beautiful is the picture of Proxima Centauri. Uh, It's nearly 4.2 light years away from us. The James Webb Space Telescope was able to take it, according to French uh, scientist Etienne Klein. um, And he was able to share this wonderful photo of uh, the picture that was taken here. Uh, Man, just look at look at that photo. That is just so uh, awe inspiring. Yeah. 
it, it just what does that make you think, Mike? I mean, it looks really cool, I guess. I have a feeling <laughs> this is probably not the picture that we think it is. What do you mean, Mike? Look at that. That is a lovely picture of Proxima Centauri. Yes, it is. It's it's beautiful. Yes. I'm wor- very worried. <laughs> yes. Well, do I need to be worried? Yes, you do, because uh, okay. actually, Entine Klen, the celebrated physicist and director, had to come out on Twitter this week and announced that the picture that he took that was a picture of Proxima Centauri was actually just a large joke, and it was actually a picture of his chorizo from lunch that day. <laughs> yes, okay. and he got the whole Twitter world to believe that that was wow. an actual space photo. That's amazing. So I was so worried it was going to be something else, but no, no, there just you go. Chorizo. It's just it was just his lunch that day. You know what? <laughs> Knowing now that it's chorizo, it's even more beautiful. Because <laughs> honestly, it's a planet. It wasn't. It was impressive, but not that impressive. But knowing that's chorizo, all I want now is chorizo. <laughs> is it weird that I'm more impressed <laughs> knowing that it's meat instead of a planet? Oh, there you go. Mike's having a good night all of a sudden. Sure. I, you know, I'm going to bring a Hot Pocket to bed tonight then. Oh, oh there man, you go. You got chorizo Hot Pocket for you? You know, I would jump back on the Hot Pocket bandwagon if they put chorizo <laughs> in them. Absolutely. Sure. I, you know, I'm going to bring a Hot Pocket to bed tonight then. <laughs> that was an early, early clip. Yes. Oh, man. There you go. The Mike. Hot Pockets. Mike with his Hot Pockets in I bed. I love me some Hot Pockets. There you go. Well, with, with that in space, what could go wrong? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, unfortunately, uh, this physicist, Etienne Klen, suffered uh, some embarrassment as he had to go on Twitter and point out that it was just a joke, uh, that it was just a close-up of a slice of a chorizo that he had at lunch taken against a black background. That's awesome. No, you know what? That, I, I mean, no, he shouldn't be embarrassed because that's amazing. He – it was it – was, it's one of those jokes that's perfect because it doesn't hurt anybody, but it's still funny that he was able to fool so many people. Yep. You know? So, uh, you know what, though? I still say at the end, the universe is still beautiful. Whether Absolutely. it's the universe or space or Trezo, <laughs> the universe. Agreed. Well, the Trezo, universe is beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Trezo is a part of this universe. Yes. I think it's beautiful. There you go. Yeah. We, we live in a good part of the universe. That's right. We have chorizo. That's right. That right. planet doesn't have chorizo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let me get to the odd news story that I was actually going to read for this week. And this is, I think, the one you were looking forward to because this is the Florida odd news story. Uh, now, who is this f- guy in Florida? It's Florida and they're crazy. Uh, again, it's another simple story. Uh, but th- there's just one thing I want to point out that's re- I think really f- that's really funny about it. But anyway, uh, we're going to follow the case of 42-year-old Rochelle Wright. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, she is not happy uh, with her husband in this story. They got into a big argument uh, on Sunday night. Okay. And uh, at some point, uh, it turned physical, and Rochelle grabbed a frozen steak from the freezer and pelted her husband with it. Oh, no. <laughs> according to the cops in this odd news story. No, I'm not f***ing kill you, motherfucker, old style. <laughs> that is not good. No. That's bad. <laughs> that poor frozen steak. Yeah. Just how? What kind of steak? How big? I need to know the details here. Was it bone in, bone out? What's happening? Uh, so at one point she missed uh, a swing and actually hit a wall. Oh gosh! So I guess, I guess the cops noted it. Maybe made a little bit of a dent. That's Do you a, think it was? That's, it a, was that's a hard steak. It was if it's big enough to, to leave a dent in a wall. I guess it has to be like a T-bone or something that has a really thick bone in it. It's got, it's, it's got a little bit of heft to it. You know, I don't yeah. think you're denting a wall with like a filet mignon. No, or something. uh-uh. This can't be one of those no. skimpy steaks. This guy has, this has a bone steaks. in it. Skimpy steaks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like, it must have caused some like one sort of, those, of like one of those giant like tomahawk steaks. It, you it's, know? it's caused some sort of evidence on the wall. Yeah, that can't be a, a so filet mignon. It was a frozen steak. Is it in, like, a package, or is it just, like, a loose steak that's well, been frozen? Uh, unfortunately, they don't have that information. Oh, now. man. Um, uh, this happened at Tarpon Springs, which is a suburb of Tampa Bay. Okay. Uh, she Sounds was, like a lovely place. Yep. 
Uh, she was arrested for domestic assault and booked into the county jail. Uh, so here's the part I really want to bring out about this story. And that is the fact that if you look closely on the police report for this story, this is where it, cr it pays to be a visual, uh, visual show here. If you look closely on the police report, you can actually see that under the weapons category, they put steak. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Weapon seized. No, but it was a steak. Well, I'm disappointed they didn't seize the weapon. <laughs> that weapon is still out there on the streets. It's loose. It's evidence. It's dangerous. It's evidence. <laughs> that steak could fall into the wrong hands. You know? I'm we got to stop all the, the steak crime and violence in this country. Yes. Any food violence needs to be addressed immediately. I find food violence to be awful because, one, you're wasting food. Yes. How dare you? And really, that's the only reason. Yes. Poor, f yeah, that, that food could have been my dinner tonight. I feel like they should be more specific, though. Like, I want to know what kind of steak. <laughs> I want to know the weight. I want to know if it was in or out of the packaging. Like, I need more details. Like, I need to, I really want to picture this. Like, also, where did she get the frozen steak from? Like, she's mad and she's having an argument. Like, most people just grab something that's close to them, right? But she had to, like, go into the freezer, get the steak, and it's never somewhere that's easily accessible. Honestly, yeah. show of hands, whose freezer is like organized nicely? Yeah. Or you just grab whatever you need immediately. For you me, you have it's to oh, bury. You, you have to, to go rummage through it. through it. You're like, where is it? Ah, oh, damn it! You pull something out. This is a half open bag of peas. What the hell? What the hell? You're like trying to. This like, isn't a weapon. <laughs> like this is leftover food from like months ago. What is this? <laughs> you start cleaning out the freezer. You start doing the food purge. You end up forgetting about hitting the guy with the steak. Yeah. So I think she had it ready. She had it stashed somewhere just in case. Uh, maybe. The weapon steak. Weapon steak. <laughs> <laughs> just separate packages. Eaten steak, weapon steak. Yeah. Th this one will do some damage. That's right, yeah. You bastard. You keep the fancy filet mignon for the eating, but the, the big T-bone, that, the that's one, the weapon the one, steak. The one can, that can dent a wall, that's the weapon steak. That's the weapon steak. Yeah. So there you go. I just I just love the fact that apparently it was whatever – steak it was it was hard and lar long enough to large enough to to make a, some sort of dent or evidence into the wall that she missed she, yeah she missed an attack and then the fact that on the police report it actually has steak as a weapon so that's awesome it's officially listed in florida that's she had she committed a a, a, a crime with a, a steak as, as a weapon if there's anything i've learned in the odd news over the past several years it's that literally anything be can become a weapon yep so anything steak there you go and that will do it that's what i have for you this week in the non fortune cookie odd news that was uh two food stories inadvertently I yeah did not <laughs> did not plan it like that but that's the way it goes here on we, the crispy noodle we are a food themed podcast for some reason yeah but it helps helps us to organize all the it food does. we just love food we don't yeah. we don't discriminate We'll accept all types of food. It helps us organize the the juicy and tasty topics we want to talk about every week. That's right. Here on the Crispy Noodle Podcast. And unfortunately, when we get to this point, that means we are done the show and have to begin to sign off. But thank you guys for tuning in to another crazy episode of the Crispy Noodle Podcast. If you like what you heard, make sure you go to our website, thecrispynoodle.com. More, more importantly, make sure you're subscribed to however you get the video feed, whether it's the YouTube feed, whether it's Facebook or uh, Spotify. Those are the three ways that you can get our video feed um, because we are now a video podcast because we can we can show things like that now that the police report actually said uh, steak is a weapon. And That's right. We can show the, the galaxy that is chorizo. <laughs> the chorizo <laughs> galaxy. Yeah. Um, and other uh, interesting things. So make sure you're subscribed so that you get the episodes uh, delivered to your main page or however else you consume, uh, whether it's the Spotify app. We want you to get the notifications straight away, so make sure you, sh you subscribe. That's right. So many ways to subscribe to the Crispy Noodle Podcast. But you can also find us individually on Twitter if you want to submit your sports entertainment or odd news stories to get your very own Hashtag sausage shout out. Yes, hashtag sausage shout out. You can find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Mikey Costanzo, M I K E Y C O S T A N Z O. 
And I am at Rich Lee Big, R-I-C-H-L-I-E-B-I-G. Find us on Twitter. If you have any odd news stories like Joe Chappell does, our junior odd news reporter, uh, you want if you want to be our next junior odd news reporter, uh, send your odd news stories my way so that Mikey doesn't see them. That's right. Um, and uh, if we do use them on the show, we give you the sausage shout out. So make sure you do send suggestions our way. We do take them all under advisement, and uh, we're very, uh, very obliged to uh, provide to give you the topic uh, to talk about if you do send it our way. So feel free to do so. Uh, but for right now, it's time to wrap it up. This has been the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Let us be the Crispy Noodle and your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. That will do it. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys later. Bye-bye, all you fine peoples. Good night. Some of us have great stories, pretty stories that take place at lakes with boats and friends and noodle salad. A lot of people, that's their story. Good times, noodle salad.